optimize the controller layer. Like, uh, and second one is optimize the view layer. First of thing, uh, these two things are like uh, I'm going to talk about. Like uh, nowadays we are getting like uh, some few of the things uh, runtime errors. My intention is I want to bring in the runtime errors to the compiler error. Suppose if I am having a reshape or a rosin compilers, we get to know if you do any mistake. So before going to runtime, uh, runtime we get to know okay we are doing mistake here. So we will get easily find. Without or suppose we do, I am not using any Rosling or like uh, Resharpa, I am using normal C Sharp compiler. So runtime itself I can able to find the things. Now I am going to talk about my interesting things. I know I know I am going to show that one. Uh, next one is optimize. First I am going to talking about optimize the controller layer. How we can optimize our controller layer? So why we need to optimize the things? When you start eliminating the errors, suppose if you write a more code, definitely we are going to make a more mistakes. So we always we should write a less code and we can eliminate the errors. I, I will show you like a, in the code, uh, maybe if you show the, I uh, means I am saying like Ola, uh, after I showing my code you get to know what I am going to say. Reduce the duplication, means like a, whatever we are uh, repeating in the so many controllers and action layers for repeating or uh, if I want to my call one drop downs, I want to call my model object, I will pass to that uh, action uh, action, then I will return that action method uh, object to the view. Uh, so I will uh, show that one also. And provide the consistency. Means like uh, how we can maintain the complete if I develop one thing, how we can maintain the, the entire application through consistent manner. Obviously, if you follow the three things, our productivity will improve. Okay? Now, I'm uh, going to say outline. Eliminating the magic strings from your controller. Suppose, uh, one second. Suppose, if I want to redirect from one action to the other action, I am giving them an action name here. Okay? In this action name, suppose if it is not there, it, is, it will not show any compile time error. It will show one time error. Okay? For that purpose, I am giving my index 1. If I try to run this application, definitely I will get run time error. Okay? For that reason, I want to give the type coupled with my uh, a controller to perform the controller how many actions are there available. In that Microsoft having a one feature is that if we go to the new package managers, Microsoft ASP.NET MVC features. This is a new package. If you download this package, this is kind of like a how we will download the new packages. We can download this package and uh, in, our, in our solution. <laughs> I think it's already downloaded, that's why I'm showing. Now, what I want to do is like a, I will eliminate this one. So, I will do here, return, this dot redirect to action. This is my controller. In this controller, this is my action method. See, if, suppose if I want to do it, any if I give one or two anything, so in the compile time itself, I am able to guess right. Well, I cannot go, this is action method is not there here. So we cannot find here. Means like we get to know. Well, before going to runtime, in the compile time itself, we are, we are knowing right. So obviously we can find this one. This is one. I think uh, you want me to run an application, it's fine. It's fine, right? I think I'm not running my application, so my intention is uh, I want to cover that uh, tips. So that is the reason, like I'm not following the architecture. My like uh, whatever the things are there, I want to show you all the things. Okay. Uh, and one more thing is first one. 
one is done. Now, second one is creating a controller super types. Uh, creating a controller super types, why we need a super types for the controllers? Can anyone answer here? I think here most of the developers. Yeah, whatever the basic functionalities or common functionalities we are using, we can write it on that controller, super controllers. So, uh, all the, that controller we can inherit into the other classes. In the same way I did. Here, what I am going to eliminate here? See, I am redirecting here, this dot redirect to action. I think I am feeling like uh, this dot, this is an uh, extension method. Uh, if you do like this, this programming is not looks good, right? Definitely, I think most of the, uh, if you, if anyone, you, you guy is coming, right? The guy don't know like, uh, uh, the guy know only redirect to action. Then why is this guy using the this dot redirect? <coughs> This is making some, you know, uh, I'm creating some no, uh, nuisance there. So for that reason, I will eliminate this one. For that, what I will do, right? Uh, I will create a my controller. For that controller, I will inherit into the my uh, controller class, the controller here. In this, I will make a in this I will write my redirect action, whatever the action result is there, I will redirect my action result. In that return, this is my controller extension, dot redirect to action. This is the way we can write our code here. Now I am going to my home controller. So already the controller is in there, so that I can uh, give my user controller here. So I can uh, delete this one. So now it is working as usual, right? Now earlier we are we are seeing return redirect to action the same manner. In the, uh, how we normally we are using redirect to one action to another action the same manner we are using. This is what my second one. Controller super types. Third one is. Uh, eliminating with the common code with the action filters means like uh, suppose I'm running this my application if I comment this one okay if I means like not comment or comment or like uh, See here. <coughs> See here. What is my common code here? Uh, some something demo dot object dot cities list. Something I'm fetching that this cities to the. Uh, this is my private method. I'm getting the cities. I'm I'm binding that uh, cities to that my model object. I'm passing model object to the view. See if you see here. In the same thing, I am having a two action methods, right? Here I am having one action method, here I am having another action method. In the two action methods, here I am repeating the two times. My code is repeating, right? Two times. Writing the same thing in the two times is not good practices, right? For that reason, what I want to write, whenever my action is executing, that time I want to fill my drop down data. So I am saying one example, um, I took one example, drop down data. So for that time, what I will do, I will create a, some action, uh, in, in general, we, in MVC we have a, two types of filters are there. Action is executing, on action executing, on on action executed. Here, once the moment uh, this action is executing, this action is executed, that time I will write a one action, uh, on action executed filter I will write for that. 
and uh, uh, whatever this uh, common code is there, right? I will eliminate this common code uh, and I will uh, get it from this uh, drop-down filling data from that on action executed. How will we do? Just we will check it right now. This is kind of my, I will write my, uh, I'm writing one class, in this class, I'm inheriting that action filter attribute. In this, I'm writing whenever my action is, on action is executed. For that time, what I did write, uh, whatever that uh, drop down filling data is there, I'm taking, uh, I'm calling this method to here. Means whenever my view result is not null, uh, or view model, it, it is like, a, I have a user select list. Means like, it is uh, taking from here, that method. Available users. This is my available users. See, uh, whatever this available users, all these things are, it will assign to the my top of this one. Like this one. First one drop down list is there. On the drop down list, uh, select a list, I am assigning to the here uh, available users. Now, if I comment this one, if I try to run up my application, without this, directly my action is executing, right? For that time, automatically once the action is executed, for that time my drop down will fail and whatever this object is passing, it will taking that object from that my action filter and it will pass to the view and it will show the output to us. And one more thing, we have, we implemented this one. Then where we will define this one? How it is working? We are writing one class. In the in that class, I will inherit into the uh, action filter attribute. In that attribute, uh, I will uh, write one on action is executing. Now, where I have to apply for that class? I said you write super class, super types, controller super types. This is my super types uh, of this one. So if I apply that my class here at a group, so automatically it will apply to the all the controllers. If you if you inherit the uh, any controller to user controller, so obviously they, it will apply all the uh, controllers to this attribute. So automatically whenever you have any drop down action thing, yeah. Just curious to know, you know, said uh, instead of duplicating the same code, yeah, using it from the filter, yeah. So. How is that different from you know taking that duplicate and code into a common object? Means like uh, we are writing a two times uh, two times right here, and that to like if you miss something, see suppose if you forgot to apply for this now, you have a CD list. See, this is a country's list. Okay. If you forgot to apply for this, means like you, for, you are, I think uh, you are commenting if you miss something, obviously it will, what happened, it will show runtime error. No, no, his question is, you can move it to separate method. Lines into a function, you can yeah. call that function from both Instead of that, you have chosen different approach. Yeah, that different approach. That is a on action is executing. Yeah. Maybe if you forgot this thing, obviously it will throw an error. We don't want to, uh, my intention is we don't want to make mistakes repeatedly, right? We are writing on common place, we will call that wherever it is required in the controller super types, so it will call automatically. No need to apply for everywhere like this one. This every time no need to apply. Automatically if you apply that attribute, it will work. Where you want to apply the attribute, the custom filter that you have written, and the attribute where we are applying super controller. Super controller. Super controller, 
Yeah, maybe I think. Uh, yeah, you can put an action. Attribute. Yeah, attribute. Like right 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 action. 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 action method. We can put other. Where are you? You know the action method I can put. Yeah. 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 That is good. You want to give my talk? Is a good question. Oh, yeah. can you? you can catch this. Yeah, it's too far, but okay. Let's see. All right. Uh, this is one. And one more thing. This simplified TDS mapping code means like uh, I think everyone understand like uh, this one eliminating the common code with the action features. I think most probably are working with MVC. I think if you see one time, then get to know. Uh, this is a, ma a mapping code means like uh, if you have like a. Uh, um, uh, if in my class, having a this is my mapping things, okay. See, uh, this is my object. Uh, some my DDO objects always we have a two types view models and DDOs. Uh, Always, if you want to do any database, uh, fetching the database information from that, uh, that time we will obviously we will map to the our view models. For that time, definitely we will do the some manual mappings. I think most of the people are knows about auto mappers. I think a uh, few people are maybe don't know this one, so that's what I choose this one auto mappers. I think if you are anyone getting bored, <laughs> please I, I will uh, close this one. Uh, this is my manual mapping. Means like uh, uh, this is my VM model or uh, this is my DDO objects. They I will do manual mapping here. Suppose if I am having a five properties, uh, suppose if I am having a thirty properties or uh, like a twenty properties, sometimes I have. So for that time, uh, I have to uh, map automatically. I want to. I don't want to do it this manual mapping. Uh, I want to do is the by using the auto mapper, automatically it will map to the our DDO object to the V model object. We can pass that object to the our view. So for that reason, I think uh, if you if you see this one, uh, this one. yeah, this is a map mapper dot map. What is my DTO? Uh, what object you are getting? You want to map to my view models. So what is the object? This is my user. This is the way we can write it on the single line of code. We can eliminating like uh, the so much code we are writing right this year. We are writing manual mapping from every properties. We don't want to write the manual mapping for each and every time. By using the single line, we can do that. Uh, that too, like uh, uh, for this single line, how we will do that? First of all, we have a one package is there. That is a package manager from the you get package manager. We have to download the auto mappers from the auto mappers. This is my auto mappers uh, namespace for this. Uh, we can download from the NuGet package manager. Uh, this uh, stop stop controller uh, This is our auto mapper configurations, right? Uh, I think uh, we can do it. Uh, this auto mapper configurations in mean, so many ways. Uh, we can use that uh, uh, IOCs, uh, structure maps, uh, so uh, like uh, Unity. Uh, we can do that one, but I was not implemented anything. Just um, I was took the normal classes and I implemented. What is auto mapper? Is it a kind of micro like mapper? Uh, it's like a uh, means like how we will getting the ORM to like uh, like that one. One question. Uh, suppose in auto mapping, uh, all the properties will be same in both the models. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will cover that one also. Means like uh, if some the properties are different, then how we do map? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we, I will show you that one also. Means like uh, I'm showing, I'm saying about uh, how we can map the first of all auto mapper, how we will do the configuration. One more question. Uh, you have shown like uh, writing again for each for the same thing. Is it possible to eliminate that for each also? Yeah, we can eliminate. Means like my intention is I want to project that one. Means like how we can use that auto mappers. Again, why uh, we need to create the duplicate model? If one model is there, again, auto mapping, you want to know. No, we have like two types of models are there. 
Now it means like uh, uh, DTO models and always uh, it should be a VM model. So, oh. Yeah, yeah. Means like uh, suppose if you change any data objects or uh, DTO objects in database objects, uh, if we, we don't want to reflect uh, in the entire application. So for that reason, we are uh, one wrapper we are taking. That wrapper uh, that is a VM model. Okay, we, we are pa mapping to that uh, DTO models and we can uh, pass that object to the. But uh, DTO model properties might be different with VM model properties. Yeah, yeah, maybe so sometimes like sometimes it will take the same properties. Maybe so sometimes like if you're working with that uh, Yeah, so they can be different and you can configure auto mappers. Auto mappers by using that one. Tell wherever is the difference. Where, wherever I will show you that one. Uh, if the properties are different, how we can map that one? Uh, this is a strong type. Suppose I will tell you can we go? Suppose if you consider this one, there is a chance to miss the property. If you miss one property, uh, definitely we will get an, uh, uh, the object where the value will, it will not come back. There is a, some, there, definitely there is a chance to miss the object. For this I want to eliminate that one. I will I introduce the auto mapper thing and uh, how we will configuration. Go to controller initialization. Uh, this is my map configuration. Uh, in this my new map configuration, here uh, I am adding the profile to here. This is my auto mapper config file. Uh, can you go to that file? This is my auto mapper config file. Here I am overriding my uh, uh, create a map for the which, which properties you want to map. See here I will create my DTO objects and VM models. This is the model I want to map. If the models are same, I can map directly. So for your question is if I am the models are different. So for that reason, I am having a question about for a member, uh, if, you, if you are talking about for a member, target ID means like uh, target means that is a lambda expression, this one. The map coming from, this is coming from the DU object, okay. This is the map coming from the source. We can bind the properties like this. If you want, if you, the, who are the properties are different, we can map like this. Suppose if the properties are uh, all are same, so we can after that offer all members are for we have a ignore option is there. This is the what we can do this. But number of properties need to be same in both the models. No, no, not required. Means on, sometimes like uh, it should be same. Sometimes like depends upon scenario. Sometimes like uh, DDO objects are always like uh, in the table. Whatever the table column names are there, always we will take that model names. Like uh, t t and if you consider uh, ID user ID user ID underscore ID. If you take like that, what happen? Uh, if you show that properties to the user. The user is uh, makes not it makes sense, right? So that is the reason we are considering as a view models that will map that model into that uh, auto map uh, DTO object by using the auto mappers we can achieve this one. Here yeah, you didn't create the domain model message. You directly converted from the entity model to the view model. Yeah. Wasn't there a need for uh, having a separate domain model? Uh -huh, it means you can use the same concept. This is just converting one object to other. Oh, one you object. can use the same concept. You want to do a manipulation yeah, yeah. of the domain model? Yeah, my intention is that uh, this is auto map now. How we can uh, mapping that object, uh, one object to the other. Uh, when do you recommend using domain <coughs> model? Domain models, I think. Uh, I like you can have the same functionality with two classes actually, entity model and the view model. Okay. But when do you recommend using the domain model? I think uh, if you go for this domain models are nothing but a DB set, right? This I think you are saying domain models. Domain models are nothing but uh, if you consider entity framework models, some DB construct. Concept we are in that that is kind of like we are directly or uh, DB set through that native object we will apply what is the property you are talking about that is a double model side right? so for that we will we will not directly map into here that is a means like uh, whatever the object is there we will create one alias name for that that we will add to the our list we are taking the properties from that and we are mapping to the view model. <coughs> Uh, th this is my uh, all the controller layers uh, like uh, while developing my application I got to know like a uh, few things are like uh, okay if you develop this application uh, so we can improve our perform performance means like uh, uh, 
uh, you, we can eliminate the errors and uh, we are eliminating the common code wherever it is we are using in action filters we can eliminate that one and mapping between the auto mappers we can by using the auto mappers whatever the manual mapping is there we can eliminate that one now i'm going to talk about uh, how we can optimize the view layer i think i'm running out of time i'm going fast same like uh, uh, in normally if you see Optimize the view layer. In the, uh, how we can optimize the view layer? I think Razor, uh, everyone knows working with the Razor is a terrific language. Uh, we can uh, uh, use our, our requirements. Uh, this is my elimination of repetitive markup. Uh, my my main, main goal is uh, I can repeat, uh, repetitive markup lines. How the repetitive markup is uh, implementing and then uh, build the consistent UI like uh, uh, I'm using editor templates. I'm using that editor templates. Uh, I'm going to use that uh, consistent manner wherever it is required. Improve the maintainability. How we are going to maintainable that application and flexibility wherever it is required. Uh, outline. I'm going to talk about uh, error handling at the compiler. I'm, I will ask one question like, uh, if you get any error in the razor view, okay, how will I find the compiler? Config for Means, uh, uh, compile time we will not get any run errors, right? Run time itself, we will get that uh, error. If anyone knows, like, uh, how we will find the compile time error? Actually, you need to, yeah. no, you need to set up in a web yeah, yeah. I, I, I will show you that one also. Okay. And then, uh, this is building editor templates. Uh, then, what is the part? Editor templates are nothing but a partial views. I think uh, encapsulated through HTML helpers, I am building a meta driven develop conventions. I think conventional UI. Uh, this is my razor markup your language. If you see here, uh, like uh, most of that classes are repetitive things. All these things are uh, completely repetitive. If you consider the drop down list and all these uh, bootstrap classes, it looks like clumsy, right? So, what are the problems in this? In the main problem is the repetition. Everything is repeating. We don't want to repetition. Our intention is always, if you, anything is repeating, write it in one place. We can put one place, we can apply for that, wherever it is required. Bootstrap classes. I think uh, here it looks like uh, we are getting more bootstrap classes. If they change the bootstrap class now 3, then if they change the bootstrap flow, 4, then how again we need to change the things, right? It's not good practices, right? And duplication. Duplication and repetition is the both, both are the same things. And we are coming to this next one. Enter templates. If you if you use that uh, one second, uh, I forgot to show one thing. I want to show. I said you right. Uh, how will I find uh, uh, that compiler error in the razor view? We will be sharing all the slides and the code on the Google Drive. So we will send you the link. So don't worry, you can't see all the code. Suppose if I make any mistakes here, something user groups, if try to run this one, the build is, I am having extension short, so that is the reason it is showing down. If you build the solution, definitely we will get a, a build is success. Because uh, we don't have any capability uh, to find that uh, in the razor view, finding the compiler errors. Now, see, my build is success. Definitely if you go for the runtime, it will throw error. I don't want to repeat this thing. Now what I will do, right? Uh, I will click on my solution, unload the solution, go to the solution, uh, edit MVC solution for this. Here uh, MVC build views is a false. We can make it as a true. Okay, again, go to here, reload the project. Okay. 
Okay, now if I try to run my application, rebuild my solution, definitely this time it will, will get one exception. Now I am getting error, right? Earlier I changed something, but that time I rebuilt my solution, but I am not getting any error. Now I am getting this time error. So we have to... Yeah, views are supposed to be pre-compiled, right? Yeah, pre-compiled, but thing is that uh, sometimes we have to enable, right, that one? Uh, actually, you can do the same thing by enabling a setting in web.config, right? Yeah, we can enable. This is kind of means uh, few guys, most of the guys are don't know some uh, like how that to is a straightforward like setting enable true or false. Yeah, like that. This is kind of uh, uh, I know that way means like uh, I'm saying this means like we can do that one also. Can you share that? In config file, you need to go and change it. Why would you have it set to false? I mean, is there any advantage to that? Speed and compile. Yes. Doesn't it? <coughs> compiled views also it will take longer time. Normally views are compiled when they are accessed first time. And that is when you will get this error. So no, is conflict will so that yeah. and during the time you will take a bit extra second and yeah. you will yeah. share there are no compiled views. We can write it in the web drop conflict file also. But client yeah. validation. Yeah. Yeah. I can we can show yeah, yeah. We can, we can show, show to later. I think we have so many approaches to follow that. <laughs> I think uh, one more, next one is enter templates. Enter templates are nothing but, if you, if you see here, hyper markup means like a uh, HTML text box for you, I'm writing my code like this. If you use enter template, I'm writing my code like this, HTML enter for, uh, what is my subject? Uh, what is my property for this? I can tightly uh, uh, model by uh, tightly couple with that my model. And uh, if you go for the standard uh, means like uh, you always enter templates or uh, it, it's like a convention basis like uh, uh, your text box is nothing but data types means that is a string. Always it should be taking from the automatically uh, in that. Uh, MS application shared below the share folder, we will create one enter templates. Okay, if you try, if you create one string template there, like this, yeah, we will give model dot string means like whatever my text box, what is the uh, value for my view data of template information, uh, what is my boost of class. If you give here, so automatically, if, uh, uh, I will show you that one. Right. If you consider here, I am creating my template like this, string template. In this string template, I will write in my text box, what is the text box of this value, view data for this, what is my booster class. Now if I am going to look at uh, my razor view, See whatever the text box is there, right? I will remove this text box. I can use that editor for. It will taking from that place from the editor template. I can remove my code like this. Wait, I will show you my screen. Suppose you, if you want to go for that uh, text uh, text box, uh, <coughs> the 
this is my text box okay text box is nothing but uh, it always should be at a temperature render from the based on the conventions what is the convention uh, this is a string so obviously if you go for this at a template it will take it from there a at a template it will look into that one if is there any string so it will take that string template it will render the template uh, a view like this and if you go for that uh, a text area i want to build that uh, text area so i can remove that uh, text area here editor for so this is my text area we we can write our code like this so already i am writing a one template for the text area this is uh, text area is nothing but a multi line text so obviously it is uh, picking that convention from the editor template uh, so we, it will look into that whether any multi line template is written for that editor for so uh, from we are already writing for this uh, text line Uh, in the uh, multi line text uh, editor html dot text area in the text area uh, what is our uh, value for this what is the bootstrap class on how many rows and how many columns uh, for the text area well, length and width we can show like this at the same manner uh, if i want to go for the drop down list so how did you um, name that multi line text into that uh, yeah yeah class? one second i will uh, go for my property here my property is there this is my data type what is my data type my data type dot multi line dot text so obviously it is taking from that uh, multi line text so obviously it will looking into my data templates it will check that one and will uh, picking the templates and render to that uh, templates to the here now if i am going for that uh, uh, drop down drop down is uh, nothing but bit a complex means not a complex uh, like uh, here i want to render how we will render render that one drop down list is nothing but uh, if i want to render the drop down list uh, i want to uh, render for the options is required for the drop down list how we will i get that options for that now i will uh, normally whatever i am writing my c sharp code uh, how we will uh, get that drop down list uh, we are set, set, uh, selecting the properties from the db we are taking the properties and we are mapping uh, to that uh, we are getting that uh, options to the uh, values that whatever the i am getting the values uh, that values i am uh, passing to the i mean here value uh, available users so automatically it will render my drop down so it looks like uh, so i can remove this one what are the drop down list is there i can remove for the editor for template so whatever the city name is there like this so the same manner already i implemented the drop down for another one suppose uh, cities are different cities are uh, already i have write on my i want to fetch the data from the countries in the same manner uh, now my one more question is there how that is talking uh, from this uh, what are the cities are there then how the cities are populating here in the editor for so if you look at my properties here i'm giving that my data type based on the data type only uh, it will pick from my data template which is a data template for this this is i mentioned as a data type as a cities so already my cities uh, html is there this is data templates are always used for the uh, partial views so it will taking my data template cities i'm getting my cities uh, through the data type uh, render that uh, cities to the my main view if you consider this one see uh, if you started uh, if you look into this one all my properties are editor for only if you use my editor templates if you look into anything it should be used for that editor editor for templates only it is taking my all these properties are editor for and one more thing uh, if you consider here if you consider and i'm going fast uh, if anyone having any doubt please let me know yeah uh, uh, 
uh, in initial template, uh, as per the H table controls, we need to create number of templates. Yeah, we, we can create any number of. Is uh, data type person nothing but partial view? It will render based on the data type. What is the type it should be? But, it uh, should be type or uh, the same view. Uh, can you not accommodate all like uh, all the top down text box? Yeah, we, we can do that, right? Already we I implemented this uh, drop down also in that uh, header template. But we are creating a number of uh, templates for text box, you are creating different templates. Yeah, so, means like uh, if you create like that, right? Means like uh, uh, for reusable purpose, means like uh, uh, whatever the we are writing code, it should be clean and manner, right? Suppose uh, in my scenario, suppose there are two drop down lists. Down yeah, for that term, that is the reason we can create a two eight templates for that, and we can uh, write uh, that code to drop down codes into that uh, eight templates, fetching that eight templates to that and main. We have to do that man. If you want to avoid that, you can use a common class as a. You can yeah. write your own class like a dictionary command kind of thing, From which will take and key value. Yeah. One partial view will be sufficient for uh, creating multi drop downs. So you need not to be creating too many partial views. One partial will solve that problem. And one more thing, like uh, editor templates, uh, by completely the model should be if you follow this one, my model, we can write our code like this, editor for temp model. I think I don't have time. I can uh, share my code. We can uh, look into on that. And uh, whatever my labels are like, uh, uh, suppose if you have, uh, if you consider, if you see here, uh, I'm using my labels. Always should be labels. Labels are using always bootstrap templates. If the bootstrap is changes to four, so for that uh, again we need to go for the changes things are required. Right? For that time I don't want to create a, a bootstrap. Uh, I will. Uh, we don't have any label templates right now. For that reason uh, we have like HTML helpers is there. That helper we will write a own uh, one static class for that uh, by taking. Yeah, extension method. Ah, extension method. We are by taking that HTML helper, we are calling into the bootstrap uh, label for that. We can call that uh, extension method to the HTML. We can do that. I think uh, I will share my code. You can uh, go through that one. And one more thing is meta model metadata. Means like uh, you don't have to show everything for now. Uh, yeah. uh, Means like maybe we can do again another session. Yeah, sure. Yes, I see you have 16 out of 23 slides. So I'm just worried <laughs> that there are too many things. Oh, uh, means like I, I, I will cover up like why, why we need for no, that. I'm just for saying it won't be justice to the topics also. I will say let's do another one with a good uh, detail. Do you like to do that again, or uh, you want to do everything right now? Okay, means like uh, can you give me five minutes so that I can explain you already the code is there. So I think I know, but we are already 15 minutes. I already gave you extra 15 minutes. But it's okay. <laughs> okay. So I will give you five minutes. Okay. You pick one, the most important thing that you want to show right now. You you can pick one. Okay. I will tell you that is a model model metadata convention. Okay. Yeah. I will tell you only with this one model data uh, model metadata. Suppose uh, if you if you see here one attribute is there. That attribute is suppose the model uh, name is different. Something model name is something blah blah is there. So you don't want to display the complete model name. I want to display uh, name uh, as your requirement. How we will display the same manner we will display. For this, what is the background is happening? When our uh, data annotation will execute. For that time, like uh, whenever we are uh, rendering, we are calling this object. We are getting the data and we are rendering the data to the view. For that time, in middle, model uh, data uh, provider is there. For that time, it will uh, create a one data annotation object. That contains the information about the what is the data type of that, what is the display text for that, and what is the display name for that. Okay, by taking this uh, information, we can develop our own metadata providers. Like uh, we can, uh, I, uh, we can uh, no need to no need of displaying here like this. Uh, in that uh, issue type, uh, if issue type is like display name is name equal to issue type like this. We don't want to display like this. We, I will write in my own metadata provider. We can uh, take that one and we can uh, uh, calling that method into the views. Uh, I think uh, I was running out of time. Uh, by <laughs> finally, uh, I'm using uh, HTML helpers and data templates, model metadata. By we can tell like uh, whatever our UI should be always conventional driven UI. Any questions? I think. <laughs>